Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Give thanks in everything, in every circumstance, for this is the will of God for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. How many of you pray? Well, how many of you would like to have your prayers answered? Okay. Well, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit about how the words that we say when we're not praying, <laughs> come on, you know where I'm going, <laughs> how the words that we say when we're not praying affect our prayers. I've got a little phrase that I've been using the last couple of years called pray and say. Don't pray for your child to be saved and then go to lunch with Sister Susie and talk about how you're afraid he's going to stay strung out on drugs and go to jail. Pray and say. Pray and say. Isaiah 58, verse 9. See, if you would have heard maybe some of you that have heard this kind of stuff for a long time that I was going to teach on words tonight, you might have thought, oh, I don't need that. I don't think I'll go. But see, you do need it, and I need it. God is dealing with me on a deeper level about the words of my mouth. And I told somebody today, I said, I think I'm in for it. I've come a long way, but I'm not perfect in this. Most people who talk a lot aren't. And even some of you quiet ones, you may be not saying it out loud, but it's in there. <laughs> Got a lot of self-talk going on in there that needs to change. Amen? And I want to change. I want to get better. I'm too old to waste my time. I mean, I want to get victory. I mean, it, it, what took me five years to get victory 20 years ago, I want to get it in five days now. I don't want to drag around and drag around. I mean, I, I want God to show me the power of my words in such a way that I would have a reverential fear and awe of God on me to say things that I know are going to hurt myself or somebody else. And only God can reveal that to us. So if you don't think you need this tonight, you can sit out there and feel sorry for me, and I'll preach to myself because I need it. Amen? Isaiah 58 Verse 9, now Isaiah 58 is a very interesting chapter about what really pleases God and what doesn't. But this specifically talks about answered prayer in the words of our mouth. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, here I am. Boy, how many of you would like that? I would. If, 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 everybody say if. If. <laughs> if you take away from your midst yokes of oppression wherever you find them, The finger pointed in scorn toward the oppressed are the godly, and you remove every form, every form of false, harsh, unjust, and wicked speaking. My. So it's very plain that God is saying, you want me to answer when you call? You want to get your prayers answered very quickly? Then here's some things that you need to do to make those prayers more effective. I made a commitment like last November or December that I just wanted to pray more than ever. And that doesn't mean that I'm on my knees somewhere hours a day. It just means that I'm even more than ever praying about things right away, watching and praying, seeing things, praying immediately with all kinds of prayer, thanksgiving, praise, you know, petition, intercession for other people. And I want those prayers to be answered. I don't want to be committed to something that is useless and fruitless and I'm just going to be wasting my time. And I believe, for me, so I'll share with you what I'm getting for me, I believe that God is dealing with me in a deeper level about the words of my mouth because if I'm going to pray more and get quicker, better answers, then he's got to show me this other side of it too. And I don't think that I have a huge problem with my mouth anymore, but any problem is too big to keep it and not care that we've got it. Amen? So, we're going to talk tonight very practically about some things to do with your mouth and some things not to do with your mouth. We're going to talk about the not to do's first. The first thing that we could ask God to make us aware of anytime we're doing it, 
And I think that's a place to start. God, anytime I'm doing these things, make me aware of it. And if you'll make me aware of it and help me, I'll stop it. Can't do it without God's help. But surely if he makes us aware and gives us the grace, we can want his will enough to stop it. The first one is to give up murmuring, grumbling, fault finding, and complaining. Can't grumble about your job anymore. Can't grumble about your boss anymore. Can't grumble about your old car, your cracker box house, or whatever it is that you don't like, you know. That husband that you believed God for, those kids you prayed for. The Israelites, and I don't think I'll ever stop talking about them, they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years making an 11-day trip. Sad. Sad. And one of the biggest reasons was because they would never stop grumbling. When they should have been given thanks, they grumbled. When they should have been rehearsing and prophesying the promises of God, they grumbled and they murmured. They grumbled about Moses. They grumbled about God. They grumbled about their miracle manna <laughs> that was being rained out of the sky. I'm sure they grumbled about the cloud and the pillar of fire, too. I, they, they grumbled about absolutely everything. We're going to look at three scriptures just so you know that I'm telling the truth. Exodus 15, 24. Do I need to ask if any of you ever grumble? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Women are good at murmuring. Now, you know, I'm not leaving the men out, but I mean, we got this under your breath I, I'm thinking right now about when God was dealing with me years ago so strongly about being a submissive wife. And that was hard for me because I'd been abused growing up and I just had made a lot of promises to myself. No man is ever going to tell me what to do again. And so you, you make vows like that with yourself for a long period of time and then you have a little bit of a difficulty being submissive to anything until you really get some revelation on it. And so, I, you know, I can remember Dave would not agree with me about something and he'd want to do something other than what I was doing and you know I would okay not going yes honey yes honey it's always you you always got to get your way <laughs> now I know none of you do that I'm just telling you the way that I was but you know or your boss tells you something and you put a smile on your face and then walk away that big jerk all he ever does is <laughs> or even worse yet you move from murmuring to the lunch table to outright gossip Let's take this to a higher level. I'm getting madder every minute. I like my message tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm liking it. <laughs> okay, Exodus chapter 15, verse 24. And the people murmured <laughs> against Moses, saying, What are we going to drink? Exodus 16, verse 2. And the whole congregation of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Chapter 17, verse 3. <laughs> See, they murmured their way all the way through Exodus, all the way through Numbers, just around and around and around the same mountains. Can I tell you that when you complain, you remain? Actually, I found a definition in a dictionary, and I wish that I would have written down the dictionary that was so I could prove it. I don't remember now where it was at. But it said to complain means to remain and stay overnight. <laughs> so I say, complain and remain, praise and be raised. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we can do what the Israelites did, or we can do what Jesus did, and even on the cross, we can still give praise to God. And when things are hurting so bad, we feel like we can't stand it. You have authority over your mouth. You have authority over your words. And nobody can make you say something if you don't want to. Amen? You're looking at me kind of wide-eyed out there. <laughs> Philippians 2.14. Love this one.
it's funny, sometimes I'll just, op I'll just tell you, open up to Philippians 2.14 and, and read it silently. And I don't have to wait very long and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> do all things. <laughs> all things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't complain when I clean the house. I can't complain when I drive in traffic. I can't complain about high prices. I can't complain about the government. <laughs> we can pray for them. <laughs> we can tell the truth, but just to murmur, do all things. Now, I don't know about you, but I have to be truthful and tell you, I don't think I've ever made it through one whole entire day yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. Maybe not outright complaining, but the murmuring thing, that's, I mean, we're talking now another whole level. And <laughs> you're so cold and I'm so hot. <laughs> I mean, some of you murmured your way into the building tonight. You murmured about the seat you didn't get. You're murmuring about the lights that are in your eyes, but you love the TV program. Would you like to see it in the dark? You know what we are? We're addicted to comfort. Just absolutely in... in in our society, we are addicted to comfort. I mean, I can go to India and people will walk for days, and I am not exaggerating, days to come to a conference. They will sit out in an open field. They will sit there, and I do not know how they do this, but they will sit there all day and not even go to the bathroom. I'm like, I don't know what kind of bladder you got, but I need a break. <laughs> We have so much, and sadly, all we do still is murmur about the part that we still yet don't have. But it can change. It can change quickly, it can change radically, and we can make the decision tonight, this is it. I'm drawing a line in the sand. You can invite God, and don't give him an invitation if you don't want him to take it, but you can invite God. I want you, God, to take over my mouth and I want you to start letting me know every time I displease you with my words, do not let me get by with it anymore. I don't want to get by with it anymore. I've studied this area until I'm blue in the face and still need to study it again. Now, you know, Dave don't have as many problems as I do because he's quieter. He's just, I mean, in the whole time I've been married to Dave, and I'm not exaggerating, I've heard him maybe three times say he didn't like somebody. I mean, I was 50 before I found three people I did like. <laughs> well, opposites attract, so. But you know what, how many of you are glad that I had a long way to go so I can, you can, <laughs> I hope you're glad you don't have a perfect Bible teacher because I'm not one. Philippians 2.14, do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God. That was the thing that got me, against God. Well, I'm not complaining against God. Well, on one hand we say, well, God, I believe you're in control. But I sure don't like this. <laughs> God, I think you have all wisdom. You know all things, and you do everything well, but I hate this. <laughs> so we're talking out of both sides of our mouth. If we really believe that God is in control and that he has a good plan for our lives, and if we really believe that all things work out for good to those who love God, how many of you know we can shout and clap and cheer in church? Wasn't the worship good tonight? Anybody could get happy in that worship. 
And you know, you, the, the preaching's helping. You're liking that too. But can I tell you something? You have to go home. The band won't go with you. I'm not going with you. I'm going home. Thankfully, I'll be on TV Monday morning to give you another little, another little stretch if you need one. But how many of you know what I mean? It all, it all sounds good. But then when we're faced with circumstances, that's where it's got to work. It had to work for Jesus in the garden when all the disciples fell asleep. <laughs> it had to work for Jesus when he was being tested and tried by the enemy for 40 days in the wilderness. That's where it had to work. The devil said to him and Jesus said to the devil. The devil talked to him and he talked back. You need to learn how to talk back to the devil. Stop just letting him talk to you and get you depressed. I, I feel depressed. The devil says, I'm depressed, so I'm depressed. The devil says, my kids are going to just get in trouble. My kids are going to get in trouble. We need to learn who we're going to be a mouthpiece for. Going to be a mouthpiece for God or a mouthpiece for the enemy. So we want to get rid of all this murmuring, grumbling, finding fault, complaining. The next thing that it would be good to do without... <laughs> is gossip, judgment, criticism, and telling people secrets. Mm. Wow. We need to learn how to cover people's faults, not expose them. You will not believe what she did. You are not going to believe who I saw the other day doing such and such and so and so with so and so and such and such. Why do we get such a big kick out of that kind of stuff? I, you know, it's just a fleshly thing. We want to tell. We want to be the one that knows. We want to be in the know and tell things. Man, I tell you what, you can start the hugest mess in your life by telling things that you shouldn't be telling. By saying things about people that you shouldn't be saying and then it, it comes back and becomes a huge problem in your life. Do you ever tell somebody secrets and then have, then have them find out you told their secrets? That's not very comfortable, is it? Matthew 7, 1 through 8. This is Bible night. I got lots of scriptures. This mouth thing is not my idea. It's God's idea. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourselves. For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned. In Winston-Salem, two weeks ago, I taught on developing the gift of mercy. And in accordance with the measure that you use when you deal out to others, it will be dealt out to you again. Now, you know, each one, each, every four or five words is a whole message in itself. Do not judge. The same way that you judge others, the amount of mercy you give other people is the amount of mercy that's going to come back. Why do you stare from without at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye, but do not become aware of and consider the beam of timber that is in your own eye? Why do you try to get the toothpick out of your brother's eye when you have a telephone pole in your own eye? <laughs> Jesus said, let him who is among you without sin cast the first stone. The best I can tell, the only right that we have to ever judge anybody else. Now, I'm not talking about judging sin. We need to know what sin is, and we, we need to be able to, to judge that sin. But we don't need to judge sinners. There's a difference. Well, I would never do that. Eh, you better watch it. I'd be careful if I were you. I've said that and had to eat those words, too. How many of you understand where I'm coming from? And I'm not talking about dealing with things in a godly manner. I'm not talking about winking at sin and looking over wrongdoing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I believe it's a hateful attitude toward people. I believe this judgment that's being talked about is an attitude toward people that, well, how could you do that? Well, I, I can't believe that you could do that. We know what they did, but only God knows why they did it. And I can tell you, there are people that are hurting so bad that we have no idea why they do the things that they do. But most people are not just mean, bad people that just get up and try to do terrible things. There's something that has gone on in their life that is still hurting them. 
or something that is going on in their life that's hurting them. Somewhere in their life, there's a deficit and they're maybe doing the wrong thing trying to make up for that, to fill a vacuum in their life, to fill an empty space in their life, and they just choose the wrong things trying to fill it. And but for the grace of God, there go I. Amen. So we can say, you know, well, that brother's in adultery and that's wrong. I'm going to pray. Amen. Verse 5, you hypocrite. <laughs> First get the beam of timber out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the tiny particle out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy, the sacred thing, which is our ability to love people, to the dogs. And do not throw your pearls before hogs. I think that's evil spirits. Lest they trample upon them with their feet and then turn around and tear you in pieces. So we open a door for the enemy in our own lives when we don't walk in love with people. But I love this. Keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened unto you. So he goes right out of talking about not judging and criticizing people into prayers and pressing in in prayer. So surely we can't just think they're two totally unrelated subjects. He must be saying here, I want you to pray. I want you to knock until somebody opens. I want you to seek until you find. Don't give up on praying. Good things are coming. But be careful how you treat people. Be careful about the attitude that you have toward people. Don't have a critical, hypocritical, judgmental spirit toward people. Use more mercy. God can answer our prayers a lot quicker if we use more mercy than we do judgment and criticism. Amen? There's a lot of people in the world that are lost. They feel invisible. They have no education about what's right or wrong. And they need prayer a lot more than they need criticism and judgment. And you know, there's lots of other scriptures that we could go to about not judging people, but I want to go on to some other things. Number three, thing not to do with your mouth. <laughs> Don't give your opinion when it isn't requested or wanted. <laughs> I did that on the way over here tonight. What if I give you a scripture that says, mind your own business? <laughs> you want to hear it? All right, I got it. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9. <clears throat> but concerning brotherly love for all Christians, you have no need that anyone should write you, for you yourselves have been personally taught by God how to love one another. And indeed, you already are extending and displaying your love to all the brethren throughout Macedonia. But we beseech... And earnestly exhort you, brethren, that you excel in this matter more and more. Make it your ambition <laughs> and definitely endeavor, which means make an effort, to live quietly and peacefully to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we have charged you. So this is saying, stay busy doing some good work Mind your own business and zip your lip. Amen. Well, you know, most of us probably talk more than we do anything else. But we may not know, or keep in mind if we do know, how important our words are. You know, we can speak words of grumbling and murmuring and complaining, and it's just going to make everybody around us feel bad, and it's going to make us feel bad, and it opens the door for the devil to work in our lives. Or we can open our mouths and be thankful. There's so many things to be thankful for, and I believe that that releases God's power in our life. You're going to use your mouth for something. It might as well be something that's going to benefit you and everyone around you. is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home 
to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted, and then they look at you, get make eye contact, and you smile, and they read that smile, and then they start smiling, and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. It's very painful and difficult to go through life with a wounded soul. I know because for years I lived that way due to being sexually abused by my father when I was a young child. But I learned that God could heal even my deepest hurts if I would just open my heart up and let him in. And in my new book called Healing the Soul of a Woman, you too can discover how to allow God into those wounded places in your life. God has a brand new beginning for you, and you do not have to spend the rest of your life hurting. Bestel nu innerlijke genezing van de vrouw via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.